Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we have seen how we can develop a feed forward neural network for flood forecasting. In this video, we will see how we will develop an ARCS neural network for flood forecasting. The code which we are going to write will be similar to what we have written for the feed forward neural network. If you see here, this is the code which we have written for our feed forward neural network. We can use most of the components of feed forward neural network except the building of the neural network. So let's directly get into the code. So the first steps of input data and normalization do not change. So let's say here we are taking another Excel file instead of the previous one. And here we are seeing that our rainfall is in the data as R and the discharge as in T. And previously, if we see our feed forward neural network, we have given the inputs of our rainfall and our discharge as input and gave also the future discharge of T plus 1 as our targets. But here we are using an ARCS neural network. So instead of directly giving it the data, we can ask the code to make its own data sets based upon the lag components and determine the future data. This is the lines which we will use for our input of our data into the code. And then similar to what we have used in the previous code, we'll be using a minimax scaler so that we'll be able to scale our data of rainfall and discharge from zero to one. Once you have developed the data, the next step is to create the input and output layers for our NARX model. So if we see here, I've already written a function which we can use for developing our data. So let's go into it and see what it is doing. So firstly, I'm asking it to create an ARCS data set, which has our discharge data, rainfall data, and also the lag components of both. So here, what the lines are doing is they are going to each value of the data sets and they are trying to find the lag components based upon the number of lags which I'll give later. So they are going to each component of discharge, let's say, and they are trying to see what is the length and then subtract the length to be able to determine the lag data. So here, initially, it is the input of our discharge and our rainfall data, and then we will combine them with the future data. So if we go to our Excel data, we can see so let's say I want the lag component of my discharge here. So let's take this data and we will see this. So let's say this is my current day. So C is my current day. And this is C minus 1 and C minus 2. So now I'm telling the code C, I want two lagged components of my rainfall and discharge. So this will take from here as my current day. And if we can just clip it here. So this becomes my current day. And the data from here becomes my one day prior. And this becomes my two day prior discharge. So in the, this is how the code is creating our data for our NARCS data set by taking based upon the number of lag components I'm giving it. It's dividing the data in such a way that its length does not change. So if we see here, we go to the end of the data, we can see here that as we have the lag components, the data would be missing. So the code will cut off these data, make it of same length of discharge as well as rainfall using this simple principle. So that is what I'm asking the code here to make it using these lines and also save the future data set of our discharge. So it will also do the same thing. Let's say this is the next day's discharge. So the code will place this in Y. So this data will become our X, the overall, whereas this will become our Y. This is how I'm asking the code to make the inputs pairs so that I can predict tomorrow's discharge. 
So that is what the code is doing in these four lines. Initially, it is taking the input of discharge and creating it based upon the lags, and the same with rainfall, and then combining it into one input and giving us future data also to train it. So this is what these four lines are doing. And here, NU and NY represent the lagged components. For example, I've just given here last seven days of the lag to see if it is working well. So once I've defined my lag components and the function to create the data, I'm asking it to create the data based upon discharge and rainfall with the lag components based upon the scale data. So until here, based upon this data, it will create us an X and Y values. Once we have created the input data sets, the next step is to split the data. So here we have input and output. So now we want to split the data into training and testing. So X train and Y train will be used for training the model, whereas X test and Y test would be used for testing the model. Here we are using 80-20 percentage similar to what we have done in the feed forward neural network. So using this line, we can split the data into training and testing. So once we have done load of data, creating the data set and splitting the data, next step is to develop the model. Similar to what we have done in feed forward neural network, we see here we are creating three layers so that we can develop our neural network. So here we will be creating our input layers, hidden layer and output layer with various activation functions so that the code can understand the data. Once we have built the network, the next is compiling the network. To compile the network, we will be using an optimizer of Adam and also use mean square error to be able to determine the loss percentage. Based on this loss itself, the model will understand whether it should stop or not. To prevent the overtraining of our data, we will be using an early stopping function. This early stopping function will see what is the valid loss for each 10 epochs. And after each 10 epochs, if the accuracy is not increasing, it will stop the code and give us the best weights so that we will get our best model. Once we have finished early stopping, the next step is to have the training of our model. We'll be using the normal data sets of our training data with an example at cost of 100 and we will use a validation split of 20% so that it does not have any overtraining. So apart from this component of our model, most of the components are similar to what we have created in our feed forward neural network. So once we finish the training, the next step is to make the predictions based upon our test data set. So here we would try to find the best possible weights and train the data set. And then we make predictions on X test to see how accurate our model is performing. Once we finish the predictions, the next steps are we will first convert the data to its original scale because here we have made the data into 0 to 1 for the model to understand it. Now we want to bring back the data to its original scale to compare it with the flood data which we have. Then these lines of code, we will see what is the absolute error and correlation of the predicted data compared to the observed data and then plot the same in a figure so that we understand it. So totally we used around nine steps and if we run the code now, we can see that the result is obtained and we can see the plot here which is comparing our predicted discharge with our actual discharge. So if you see the peak values are not exactly uh, as high as what we are obtaining but the pattern of the data sets is similar to what we have obtained. So we see the previous figure we can see that accuracy of correlation is 0.82 the absolute error is 0.01. Based on these results, we can see that the model is doing well, but it's not able to achieve the best possible result, maybe because of the data set which we are using. We can also try to optimize the model to reach better results by changing the lag functions based upon 
understanding of its correlation with the rainfall data set. So optimization can be done here as well as the patient's values we can change to have a better result. But we will try to compare the same results with our feedforward neural network and see how the model is performing. We can see that the correlation in feedforward neural network is 0.85 but the mean absolute error is 46. So previously we got 0.83 from our NARCs and mean absolute error of 0.01. So based on the understanding, although the correlation of the data here is high, but the mean absolute error in our NARCs is showing better results. Therefore, our NARCs model is performing better overall compared to the feedforward neural network based upon the accuracy. So in this way, we can develop our NARCs model to be able to develop a flood forecasting model. So this is how you can develop a simple NARCs model which is a classical model to be able to predict future discharge. If you have understood this concept, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and share it with people whom you think this information can be useful.